many would assume he shouldn't be there. He's only there because he's riding for his father, and that just creates so much pressure. It's Australia who is out in front. A decisive move by Joseph O'Brien. He's gone straight to the front and asked the horse to quicken. He's been always mixing with the elite of the bloodstock world, both human and equine. You know, Joe Crowley, um, Anne-Marie Crowley, Aidan O'Brien, greatest horse trainer that's ever lived. The father and son combination of Joseph and Aidan O'Brien won the Investec Derby with Camelot. It was in Joseph's DNA. You're going to want to bust out your own path in life. He's in this game all his life. He knows nothing else. There's been thousands of winners trained up here. The pressure is immense, and it's up to you then to deliver. I see them there now, that's probably, thank you. I suppose from as, from as early as I could walk, I was sitting up on horses. Obviously, I was born into a racing family, and racing is our passion as well as our business. The, the privilege that I've had since I started training is that I've had the support of, of some fantastic people, fantastic owners. The other side of the coin to the privilege and the facilities and everything else is that scrutiny and pressure from day one because people will inevitably put it down to the head start rather than the work that has ultimately brought about the, the bulk of the results. Joseph, I would safely say, would never actually realize how good a jockey he was. He had the most powerful job in flat racing in the world at a very, very young age. You're riding for some of the biggest owners in the world. There's so much money at stake because obviously the value of these horses when they're retired to stud. And you have to deliver, you cannot make mistakes. To deliver the goods under those pressures, you have to be mentally very strong. There's very few people can do it. And human nature being as it is, the amount of people that would have wanted him to fail. Well, Joseph's life for jockey was probably a lot different than others because he was always struggling with his weight, you know. And the press was bad. There was itsy bitsy press. What's he going to weigh in today? How much overweight's he going to weigh in today? A lot of it was jealousy. And when people voice their opinion, that's fine. Everybody's well entitled to do that. But it's not something we got, we've got too caught up on. We'll do our best and try to prove them wrong by our results on the track. But Camelot is knuckling down. Camelot moving to the front and driven out. Well, win for Joseph O'Brien. Three investing coronation cups in a row. And that turn of foot. Joseph O'Brien. Joseph O'Brien. And wins an Epsom Classic. You know, he wants to prove people wrong, prove people that he was a world-class rider, that he is a world-class trainer. And um, regardless of what his pedigree is, he, as an individual, is a world-class operator himself. totally focused, he's totally driven, and he watches everything, and he knows everything that's going on. Some of the great trainers can just look at a horse and say, he doesn't look right. Just, it's, it's an innate thing in the great trainers, uh, whether they're trainers of human beings or trainers of horses or run business, they have that special thing that makes them a little bit different than everybody else. He lives and dies for that operation to be as successful as he is. At the same time, you could be getting her back on there yourself if you like, because she'll she'll run in the in the autumn there. You know what I mean? I've been well, you know. I feel a lot more nerves uh, as a trainer than I ever did as a jockey. 
on the race day, the jockey's job starts and finishes, whereas the trainer's work is done, and he has to sit back and literally hand the reins over to the, to the jockey and leave him do his thing, and it's a little bit more nerve-wracking because it's out of your control. All right, Hugh. Okay, Shane. Okay, Bash. All right, Keen. Yes, yeah, so having the National Hunt and the flat teams obviously means that our operation is in pretty much full swing year-round. You know, there, there's been times while I've been working for Joseph, you might take any one week, yeah. and he's been in America for the sales. Flies home, arrives back in Ireland at four o'clock that night. He's driving straight to the car to watch gallopers the next morning. He's then, he's going back down to this toll for the races in the afternoon, and it's just this relentless wheel turning. It's a way of life. You don't lock up for the weekend. No matter what part of the world you're in, you have a big operation running here with things to deal with and problems every day. All right, Jay. It'd be grand to go do a second one there, yeah? The key to the great trainers is the simplicity of the whole thing. You're coming out thinking, scratching your head. Why can't I do that? <laughs> because it's simple. Well done. That's the shot. Well done, Kano. Perfect. What is instinct? With, with Joseph, he'll tell you himself, he's been looking at good horses since he was a, a small lad. You know, if you asked him to describe it to you in words, he'd probably struggle, but you put a horse in front of him and he'll give you a nod or he'll shake his head. It's, it's just experience and repetition. I suppose the horse, at the end of the day, is an athlete and he has to win and he has to want to win. But it's very important that the horse is given the opportunity to achieve his best possible rating or the peak of his powers on the track. And in order to do that, he has to be fit, healthy, and he has to want it. Then to be able to have the great horses and make the right decisions with them, to nurture their career along in the right direction, to get the maximum out of every horse. in the Dubai Judy Free Derby. I suppose in all sports, uh, the margins are very small and a small change in a routine, a small tactical change can make a huge difference and ultimately winning is our job and winning is what we have to do every day. Joseph O'Brien has landed another Group 1 race, another race at the highest level with a big price horse. Well, what he's achieved in a very short period of time has been phenomenal. The Melbourne Cup, an Irish Derby, a Breeders' Cup. Sure, there's a fellow spending lifetimes trying to do that and never do it. And I think this is only the beginning. Fast forward on 20 years, what will Joseph O'Brien have achieved and then? Could be phenomenal.